So here we go, my models are all finished up. I've now done all the detailing and added the transfers to them. So this really brings the model to life from the previous version where it just looked a bit dull, didn't have any detail, it just looked gray and black. It's obviously still got quite a lot of gray and, gray and black, but it just looks that much better for having the extra bits of detail to it. And things like the transfers that really bring the model to life. As you can see in the background, I've used lots of different colours, but this stage was actually pretty quick for me to do because I'm only using small bits of paint in tiny little areas um, of detailing. So it means I can actually get through this stage really quick. It's a lot quicker, for example, in comparison to putting down the coat or the carapace colours, which was obviously a large area. Um, so it's worth doing this extra stage to put in this extra detail because it really brings your models to life. So the first bit of colour I put down was the Evil Sun's Scarlet, which is just inside um, past the tubing, which is a little tag on there, his left collar. Um, I then did White Scar on the right hand side, which is this little skull design. Now when I was doing both of these two, and actually for all the paints on this, I never watered down the paints. Normally I use my Lamian textured paint to um, do like a 50-50 filter with the paint. So it makes it nice and smooth, easily flowing, and it's great for it when you're doing the layering. When I'm doing this extra detail stage, I'm not actually covering up too much, and I kind of don't want to get inside the recesses. I kind of want it almost to be like a highlight on top. So having your paint slightly thicker, I find, it really helps at this stage. So after those two, I did the Hashnut Copper, which is, I guess, my gold slash brass colour, which goes into the kind of the gas mask on the rim and on the eyes itself. So if you can just see in there, like the eye sockets get a little bit of the Hashnut Copper. Um, the kind of covering the join of where the melter goes is like these two little buckles. And then on the back, you can see some more kind of buttons and buckles. Um, and even on the coat itself, there's not many on this model, but for example, just there, there's a little gold button. So I'll show you some more of the models in a minute and you can see that there are actually lots of buttons all over. And it just kind of, when you're looking at the model from distance, it does look a bit black and gray, I'm not gonna lie, but then I'm doing a very kind of gritty, realistic colour scheme. So things like having the um, these kind of copper coloured buttons sort of sparkle really make the model look painted and bring it to life a bit better. Now, the next stage is what I should have done was put the transfers down. However, I didn't. I kind of steamed straight on with the, the lead belcher and I did all the edge highlighting and battle damage on the carapace. So as you can see on the shin guards and the chest plate and the helmet, I put the lead belcher all the way over. I then washed it with the null and oil. Um, and then afterwards I put transfers on. The downside with that, as you can see where I've rectified it, is the transfers are now all clean. But really, some of the battle damage is going to have kind of destroyed those markings. So I then had to go back over with the um, lead belcher to kind of kind of recreate that battle damage. So as you can see, it kind of works out for the best. It makes these look a bit more kind of gritty and realistic. For the transfers themselves, I used the um, I just used water to kind of get the transfer off onto the surface. I kind of let that air dry and then I put very carefully a layer of Lamian medium down. So I actually put it on the entire chest plate because you don't want any joins showing between the medium and the transfer. And luckily these transfers tend not to show too much in the way of join of where the transfers are. Like, because uh, sometimes when it, you get a cut on the transfer, you see that little line. So that can be a bit annoying. Luckily these, these ones aren't too bad. So that was it for the edge highlighting and on all the sort of work on this model. Now let me show you some of the others. 
So here are some of the other models that I've painted up. As you can see, the collar on this one is a bit more clear. Um, when I was doing the carapace, what I ended up doing is I did the highlighting with the lead belcher, but then I kind of knocked it back a bit by reapplying um, kind of null and oil all over the carapace just to tie it together again. On the back, um, these guys have these power packs. So what I did here is I mixed some Rhinox Hide and Abaddon Black together and I kind of stippled it on very slightly in the corners to give it like a kind of a dark muddy effect. And then on top of that, I painted some more lead belcher. So it kind of creates this illusion of chipped paint and showing the kind of met metal box color underneath. Um, I then of course did like a slight, I would guess, dry brushing on the filter unit with the lead belcher. So there we go. I've painted them all up. I've just now got the arms to go. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video on the Grenadiers. Uh, please let me know your thoughts on my colour scheme, maybe what you would do, um, do differently. Um, any tips you want to pass on to me, please do. I'm quite curious to see how everyone does theirs. Um, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.